I'll keep that hi hat going. Yeah. Can you come in for a second? Yeah, you might you, you might hear me not sound like I'm dropped because I gotta I gotta take this and I gotta pick it up. Well, I met Gareth Owen. We were working on the same show. I'd written some music uh, to go with the show, and I was emptying it. And Gareth was uh, playing different Shakespeare characters. And he asked me whether I'd like to go and play some of my music to him at his house. Uh, and I thought that'd be nice. And so I did, and he played me some of his songs. And I just thought that instantly his voice was something that ought to be heard and not just kept on the small sort of computer demos that he'd done on his own. So I. I put it to him that I could put a band together and, and help him produce his, his favourite songs and this is where we are now. Once left her death comes dancing into his head They told him she was nothing but trouble Oh, so pretty but so unkind But looking at her was like a staring at the sun Her beauty made him blind He asked her, how come you treat me so cruel? When you know my love is true She said most likely my friend I'm gonna break your heart Fall in love with me And I'll break your heart Shall I tell you why I'm gonna break your heart I ain't got nothing better to do I come from a more experimental uh side of things in the way that I produce my records with the instrumentation that I normally go for is quite different to uh, the simplicity of country but um, I've really enjoyed exploring Dylan and Johnny Cash and going back to those records that I listened to a lot years ago um, and putting my own sort of stamp on it as well. I know Eddie uh, Begley and uh, he I, I trusted him and he said you want to uh you want to do a recording? And I said, sure. You know, he says there was a, a, uh, a good uh, country singer and we're going to try to do a different thing to it. And I said, oh, you know, interesting. And we're in Wales. And I thought, yeah, nice. It was, uh, and I said, yes. And uh, it was fun because, uh, Gary, you sound very American. Mm. And I used, to, I used to work in a country in uh, Western and Southern rock bands back in America in the day. And I enjoyed the music because it's very relaxing and peaceful and the people are good people and it was fun. Yeah. Well, I'm a convert to country music and um, it started off really as a kind of stage show. It's a theatre piece. And I play this imaginary alter ego that I've created called Verge Clenthills. And I wrote songs for him and stories. And it's about 
the South and the low life and, you know, some white trash and whatever, and there's a kind of romanticism about it. But I tell stories. For example, we've got a sequence here about Jesse James and the barber, and the, the barber is a kind of loser. You know, he's never done anything. He's played in the same town all his life, and uh, he's redeemed by the fact that he once met somebody who spoke about somebody who saw Jesse James riding by. And I, I do this little scene about Jesse James. I'll put my country hat on and. Oh, Jesse Woodson James was born in Clay County, Missouri. During the Civil War, he rode with Southern Guerrilla later Charlotte Corn Trail, ambushing Union troops and trains. After the war, with his brother Frank and their younger brothers, he carried on his career as a robber and soon became the most famous outlaw in the West with a 25,000 dead alive price on his head. He robbed 17 banks and trains, and he took a loot totaling $200,000. He was shot in the back by friend and relative Bob Ford while straightening a picture in his house. In a spring afternoon in 1882, his $500 coffin was lowered into a deep grave at the foot of a coffee bean tree in the Samuel's yard. The whiteboard on his grave said, Jesse W. James, died April 3, 1882, aged 34 years, six months, and 28 days. Murdered by a coward whose name is not worthy to appear here. Why, Jesse James had come home at last. Jesse James and the barber take three. One, two, one, two, three, bop. Talk with a man who saw Jesse James 